Before we start this game, um, why don't you list off some of your, I guess, biggest albums or records that you have helped on or worked on, basically done? <laughs> yeah. Um, so starting almost chronologically, Feel This Moment with Pitbull and Christina. That was my, Christina Aguilera, that was my first big top 10 record. And how old were you when that? 21. Psh, I mean, <laughs> I, that's incredible. Well, I had a lot of help from my, I, I was signed at the time. We all, it was a big team effort and I was lucky to be a part of it. But For sure. Um, so Feel This Moment was my first mm -hmm. one with Pitbull and Christina. Such a good song. Thank you. <laughs> and then Jealous with Nick Jonas was my second. Damn. That was like a big moment for me because that was, uh, you know, it was, uh, I was still finding my way through the industry and working with Nick at the time, who he was trying to figure out his that next That was a steps. huge moment for him. It was a big moment I'll for him. I'll never forget when I re heard that song for the first time. I was in uh, Beata, my music director's mm -hmm. office. You know Beata? Yeah. And so she comes in and she plays a song. She's like, do you know who this is? And I was like, no. And she's like, just guess. And I'm like, uh, like I could, literally could not pinpoint who it yeah. was because the sound was just so different. And we were all blown away. And obviously it was a huge record. And so congrats on no, that. No, that was great. And you guys at iHeart really, really helped with that record. I remember yeah. Nick did a lot of interviews and a lot of shows and he felt a lot of support For and sure. that's what helped drive it because it's it was uh again it was so different that it really needed a lot of attention for people that aren't in the industry it's how important it is to like the marketing behind a single like and doing radio promo essentially radio promo is very important yeah uh yeah the marketing is very important i think uh especially these days there's a smaller smaller attention span yeah so you need to kind of be in people's face a lot. But the truth is, is that if it's a great record, then it, it'll do a lot of the downhill work itself. For sure. But going to radio stations and, you know, doing their shows, performing to their fans, their demographics, you know, going on with the on-air talent, speaking to them, getting a rapport is super important because PDs, uh, program directors at the end of the day, really, and a lot of the radio stuff really are the champions behind certain records. Yeah. And you need to almost start the song. Some songs really start in small locations and, and are become big hits because you know um, one area really championing the record and for sure put their stamp behind it. And it's interesting because as I feel like sometimes big names, big artists, uh, feel like they get to a point where they don't have to do radio promo anymore. Sure. They don't have to come in and do interviews. But the Jonas Brothers are people that are they they they're I mean they don't think that way at all. Like they're pros. They are pros, and they have been promoting this last album, like yep. to coming in and doing interviews and all this stuff. And so I just think it's like goes to show what I mean. You can never pretty pretty much stop. No, you can't. <laughs> and that's important, you know, showing people that you showing up really to be yeah. there to promote the record because a lot of time and a lot of energy goes in from making the song to the marketing, the release, all the label, all the hours that go into the song, and it's important that someone's out there putting the face to For the sure. song. Okay, so Jealous. Okay, Jealous. Uh, keep going down the timeline. Yeah, sorry, this is I fun. forgot. <laughs> uh, Good For You with Selena Gomez. That was another big one, being a part of that record, and that was a big turning point for her. Mm -hmm. uh, the that was when she, um, I think Heart Wants What It Wants was like the single kind of came before it, set the mood for this kind of more mature Selena Gomez that we know now. Gosh, I remember her coming in and doing that interview. Yeah. I interviewed her, I was still doing Middays oh, at so the cool. time. And she was, it was right when she was trying to get out of her, like, you know, cutesy vibe, but be a little bit more, more sultry and grown up. Uh, speaking of Selena, is there anything you can tell us about any upcoming album from her or any new stuff sure. from her? Uh, there will be new stuff from her. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. In the future. <laughs> oh, come <laughs> on. <laughs> but uh, no, we've been working together a lot recently. Okay. We have some songs that we're both very proud of and excited to share with everybody. And very cool. when the time's right, we'll all get to enjoy. She looks like she's having fun wherever she is right now, like South of France or Italy or something. Yeah, she's definitely <laughs> having a good time. She deserves it. Of course. Okay, so Selena, and anybody, anybody else? Off Fifth Harmony, I did the um, Flex song with them. I had No Brainer with DJ Khaled and Bieber and Charles Rapper. Very and cool. That, whole th that was last year. Uh, Let Me Down Slowly with Alec Benjamin. I'm very proud to be a part of that record. It wasn't a big radio single, but it was a really big streaming record and mm -hmm. turned out to be pretty important for me. Uh, and then Drew Barrymore with Bryce was a, the first big hit we had with Bryce, or at least for him yeah. it was a big hit. And uh, very that went platinum and for our first single with the major label to go platinum, that was a big deal for very us. Very cool. Yeah. 
Well, congrats on everything. Thank you. I want to play this little game with okay, you. Okay, okay, okay. I'm ready. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to name off some of the artists that you have because we're doing much work with, work with, and then let me know the first thing that comes to mind. You can it could be a word, it could be a full thought, whatever. Gotcha. Kind of rapid fire. Okay, rapid fire. Nick Jonas. Hard working. Sean Mendes. Mm, very talented. But when there's a hmm. <laughs> I when I think of Sean, I think talented. We worked one night till I think one in the morning or two in the morning. Yeah. I was so tired and he was like, I got this another idea for a, a great song. <laughs> Let's like, start it right now. And I was like, oh my God, I need to go to bed. But he is incredibly talented and hard yeah. working also. Yeah. All right. Selena Gomez. Real. Demi Lovato. Very honest and very real for sure. Bieber. Mm, fun. How about DJ Khaled? Mm, to be honest, I don't really know DJ Khaled, but the first thing that comes to my mind is great ears. Great, like, curation. Amazing. I'm like, good looking ears or no? Okay, no, okay no, got yeah. it, got it, got it. He's got a great shape to his lobe. <laughs> yeah, he's got a beautiful lobe. Yeah. Um, but I've never met DJ Khaled, but I gotta say, that guy knows what he's doing. Uh, yeah, you're telling me. Lil Wayne. Um, OG. He's, uh, represents for a lot of um, new rappers that have come from him, you know? Mm -hmm. And Enrique Iglesias. Oh, well, a good friend. He's a good friend? Yeah, one of the nicest guys I've ever worked with. Yeah. How'd sure. you meet him? Uh, he called me after Jealous and wanted to start working together. And he's been a good friend since and another super pro. Does he ever uh, do any pranks on you? Because he's quite the prankster. Oh, yeah. He's definitely pranked me. I'm, well, one time we were all at <laughs> dinner with like 15 people. And I think he took my card and put it on the on the <laughs> on the um, the bill check to get you. And I didn't realize what happened. But of course, he he. It, but he's he's the nicest guy ever. So my first um, time working for Kiss was, gosh, a little over 10 years ago at this point. But it was like my first gig. It was a Wango Tango. Mm -hmm. And I was so green in the industry, just starting out at this big station. And um, they're like, one of your things you're going to do, you're going to interview Enrique Iglesias backstage, like very loose, like, you know, webcam style just for like the, the web. And... I'm so like nervous and I had my questions prepared and like I think I asked him the first question and he answered it or whatever and then I went to go ask him a second question and he was like you know what and he pushes the microphone and he was like I'm done he's like I don't want to do this interview and just walked away and I was like okay so and then he just came back and he's like I'm kidding and I was like that was the worst thing ever but I will never forget that to this day that's probably like one of the worst <laughs> things that could happen yes it's almost nice to experience it and then realize okay it's not that it was worst. a joke yeah, I yeah, know. yeah. no he's really great and he is really hard working and he really cares about his fans and his music for sure yeah. kelly clarkson mm. oh incredibly talented yeah i mean incredible um pitbull another super pro yeah. really really understands how to um how to give his fans what he wants and he's really shows up on time he always is there for shows sure. up. him and enrique for sure and then last one christina aguilera yeah uh, pipes, you know, someone that could really, really blow and really sing. So when you did that song with them, I mean, way back in the day, were you guys all together in the studio or did, it, or did they send mm. you the, their, you know, vocals? They sent the vocals. It was, those guys are all, you know, huge stars. So they're all over the place. They're all different places in the world. I think Pitbull sent his from Brazil and Christina sent hers from, I forget where she was, New York or something like that. But That uh, just goes to show the magic behind what you do oh it all comes to the because you know like for the us the listener it's like to me you i picture you guys all in the studio yeah. together for a whole weekend and like that's how margaritas. i used to picture it when i was younger <laughs> yeah for sure well, and sometimes it does come together like yeah. that you know but uh, oftentimes again if you're working with very established artists they're they've got a thousand things to do and they're always looking for their next record and their next project and so you kind of have to be mobile so i'll go to enrique i'll go to pip i'll go to these different places if i need to but so. a lot of times it all ends up back at my studio you know speaking of your studio i mm -hmm. do want to end this interview with a little mini tour if that's okay sure sure i'm kind of geeking out a little bit because it's really really cool no in problem here. okay where do you want to start um you you tell me where okay we okay start. we'll start over here so the keyboards these are my go-to keyboards when i'm mm -hmm. making music um these guys were made uh between the late 70s and 90s and what's cool about them is they don't make them anymore so you have to buy them from someone that's had them which is can be a lot of fun because you yeah. kind of get them where they left off and no two are the same interesting yeah this is uh, a special keyboard it's based off of the old Mellotron which was like an old sample um, 
tape machine yeah. that they used with the Beatles and Strawberry Fields and what? all this great. So they digitalized, digital, digitalized yeah. it. Digitalized it. Digitalized it. Gotcha. And made it uh, more accessible. So again, there used to be big, a big tape machine in the back, but now it's just. Uh, oh my goodness. For fun, just looks. Cute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I um, love it. Over here is this is my vocal chain. Um, that's will run all my vocals through these two guys. Uh, it gives a really nice, warm, fat sound, and this is compresses it to make it sound a little bit more um, put together. Over here is my favorite piece of gear, my piano. Just an upright piano. Um, but what's cool about this piano is that it has what's called MIDI capabilities. In other words, when you press down this pedal here to the left, it now will play things from the computer. So you can have wow. any synth, synth you want up there, but you can still uh, have it being played by like a real piano. So That's you get a incredible. humanized feel. Yeah. Very cool. And then obviously... My microphone and set up in the Lambrosa Studio A. Custom made. Wow. Very cool. But anyway, like I said, yeah, I'm not... I like using my gear for um, creative purposes. So yeah. everything gets becomes and evolves and then has a new life in each record. Very, very cool. Sir Nolan, thank you for letting us invade your space thank you. at a home away from home. And um, and just for spending some time with us. This was really, really cool getting to know you. Thank you. Appreciate listening. <laughs>